parent recently asked me, should I send my child for additional math support on top of school? Something like Vedic math or Abacus or Kumon? She then said, uh, many of my relatives are sending their kids and sometimes it gets to me. Now, I understand you. You want your child to succeed. You want them to be confident with numbers, not fall behind. And sometimes the pressure can get to you. Now, but the question is, does that mean that doing these is going to help your child? Let's find out. First, let's take Vedic math. It tends to give a set of cool shortcuts that end up working for some special case of numbers. I know it because I kind of studied it as a child. What it does not do is teach you why these techniques work or teach you underlying math concepts. So the studies show that when children end up focusing too much on such procedural work, how to do math fast, they tend to think that's what math is. And the problem with that is that that actually makes it harder for them to understand underlying complex concepts or apply it to real world situations. Uh, when I did this as well, I used to think that math is about doing calculations fast. I thought Shakuntala Devi is a mathematician without realizing she's a human calculator, which is just not the same at all. And then I actually got a book that was gifted to me by uh, my school uh, for winning a math aptitude test. That was in fourth grade. I actually have a copy of that book right now. And this taught, taught me that math is a lot more than doing calculations and arithmetic. In fact, that's the more mundane part of math. And that got me starting, started thinking about math as a tool for problem solving. I'll talk, I'll talk about that in a bit. But as of now, Vedic math, by the way, it was made up by a guy about 100 some years ago. Nothing really Vedic about it. Uh, just a good name that he, that he gave. And it tends to never almost teach the why, as I've learned. Now the second is like the abacus. And it was super popular when I was a child. Now it helps, looks like it helps children visualize numbers and place value in an interesting way. And also helps them stay concentrated on one task for a while. But when I looked at the studies that look at what happens when children do this a lot, what it showed was that when there's excessive focus, once again, on such pushing numbers, uh, it does not translate to whether children have understood math concepts deeply and to whether they can solve new problems in innovative ways, in creative ways that require math. Why am I mentioning these? These are a lot more important and it can't come at the cost of pushing numbers. Now the third, a common, um, tends to be pretty worksheet focused and tends to be about putting a lot of um, these over and over again. And looks like the study showed that it does help in getting some of the fundamental math skills of like, you know, arithmetic skills. But once again, when they looked at a broad study of people who did this, it did not translate to understanding the concepts deeply. And neither did it, in fact, it showed that some children doing this struggle to apply things to more new uh, kind of novel situations because they're a little too used to doing only the problems that they are comfortable with. Now, the question also to consider when you're thinking about an after school program is, are you overwhelming the child? Now, when you look at children who tend to be too much pressured outside of their school environment, what when we study them, what we see is that they have higher occurrences of anxiety, of like feeling math is a chore, of con assuming that math is kind of just pushing numbers like this over and over again in a repeated way. So when it comes to giving children a true joy for math and developing that math problem solving muscle, less is more. If they do a little bit of it in a really good way, they end up, they end up developing an intuition much better. The other thing to consider is the methods that are being used in school, let's say, we, say stay curious, we do like a deeply inquiry-based, project-based method where they're like really solving problems, doing their own projects, seeing the application. And if the after school is more um, repetitive or drill-based, children actually do worse because their mind is now confused. They might even develop some misconceptions because of the difference or the opposite nature of the ways in which they're being taught. So Daniel Willingham's work shows that consistency across methods reinforces concepts and the disparity there actually confuses them. So what can you do? Think of math as three pieces broadly, okay? An intuition for the underlying why concepts. The concepts, why is that happening? Why does carry and borrow work this way? What am I really doing when I cross multiply? All of these tiny, tiny cuts, make sure they get the why, they never lose the intuition, okay? Second piece, where does it apply? What real world situation can I model to this, as this math, in this math language? Now math is a language and they're learning to speak math looking at the real world. That's the second piece. I'm gonna call that the application aspect of it. And the third is the problem solving aspect of it. Hey, now that I understand the concept, now that I know where it applies, can I actually do the math to solve it? And that's where a little bit of fluency helps, but exposure to good problems helps even more. So then what can you do? First piece is projects. Uh, projects like I set up a marketplace, they automatically see decimals and fractions coming up, set up a small, uh, one of the projects we are doing is set up a small like uh, kitchen business and set up prices, everything. When you do that, automatically you notice that you have to deal with fractions and decimals and things like that. The other thing you can do, another kind of project is maybe 
set up a garden and there you have to understand what kinds of um, measurements organically come by what kind of area and perimeter all those concepts just kind of hit you uh, where through a problem rather than just being told about it so that takes care of the application layer for the intuition right resist the temptation to just tell them do this and make sure you're going into why that works why does that work and keep reinforcing that over and over again so that they understand that math can be fully understood they don't have to like memorize something just for the sake of it the third for the problem solving we can pick really good problems so after this challenging math puzzles which i went through quite fast in my fourth and fifth grade i had to kind of graduate and there are many books but one of the books that really helped me was was this one i still have the copy of this one though uh, right from this is what i had in my 11th grade 10th 9th grade i think it's called mathematical circles has problems that are categorized into concepts so that you're not just solving puzzles but they're all falling into ideas like parity or pigeonhole principle um things like these that are actually really beautiful so they start seeing and appreciating the beauty of math so projects and problems with good intuition is the way for you to go and when you do this if you want to you can even pick art of problem solving which is a uh, really good introduction to math through problem solving and not through drilling when i met grant sanderson at um, khan academy he runs a channel called 3 blue one brown he told me that a good part of his influence to appreciating the beauty of math came from solving art of problem solving so these are great ways to do this that will make sure that children get a holistic competence in math and develop a joy for this beautiful thing called math which is a language for the rest of their lives